Coming up next on Good Morning El Paso. This is one of our darkest days as a city, and I know that we are much better than this. The city of Baltimore in shambles this morning following a day of violence and looting. Do authorities have the manpower to prevent another night like this? And here in El Paso, two foster parents accused of sexually abusing children. One of the parents still on the run this morning. And less than two weeks until Election Day, a local district's bond proposal is facing an uphill battle. Why some teachers, once in support of it, are now changing their minds. Live where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. Shocking images this morning out of Baltimore after riots erupted in the city. This, this after the funeral of Freddie Gray, the man who died while in police custody. At least 15 police officers were hurt and now the National Guard has been deployed. We'll have more coverage on this developing story in just a moment. But first, good morning. I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning, everyone. Can we expect another chilly start out there this morning? If you haven't walked outside yet, we can tell you what to expect. Yeah, this is a live look outside courtesy of our ABC7 downtown camera. You can see the skies are lightening up out there. and. Just want to let you know that it's looking to be nicer, nicer than yesterday. And uh, Crystal is standing by to let us know that the rest of it looks great as well. We are looking at a nicer forecast, and that's going to be a theme over the next few days. Plus, as we just mentioned, a little bit of a chilly start to the morning, but we'll warm through the afternoon. We're at 46 degrees in El Paso right now. Those winds, not too rough. We're calm currently reporting, but about 5 to 10 miles per hour around El Paso County. And our relative humidity just under 50%. A look at Las Cruces, 42. The temperature winds at 7 miles per hour. We are feeling like 38 degrees outside because of some of those light winds and the cool air in place. Where's that cool air coming from? That'd be north of us. It's dropping in thanks to the, us still sitting on the backside of that storm system that affected us two days ago. The storm itself way off to our northeast. But for us, it's dropping down still some clouds and some cool air from the north. And that is affecting your temperatures both in the morning with a chill to start the day and your afternoon with temperatures below average. We're going to track those temperatures warming over the next few days in just a few minutes. All right, Crystal, thank you. Early voting has begun, which means the Isleta School District is days away from finding out whether a $450 million bond will pass. But a new teacher survey shows support for the bond is declining. Reaping the most tax dollars from the bond is the Eastwood area, which is set to receive $94 million. At the bottom, Parkland, getting a little over $11 million. Prior to the bond's details coming out, 80% of Isleta teachers polled supported it. But now it's down to 63%. Some teachers see this bond as favoring some areas more than others. Superintendent Dr. Xavier de la Torre had this to say. Parkland would appear not to be getting the same investment that Eastwood High School learning community is getting. But of the $94 million, $75 million are Eastwood High School. So if you were to pull Eastwood High School out, you'd find that Parkland gets $26, $27 million, and the rest of the schools in the Eastwood learning community share $19 million. Although the bond lost teacher support, the majority of YTA still support it, saying it supports the best interest of the district. More bond information can be found at kvia.com. We're learning more about two longtime El Paso foster parents accused of sexually assaulting two children. 55-year-old Sandra Huerta, seen here, was arrested yesterday, charged with aggravated sexual assault of a child and indecency with a child. Huerta's husband, 62-year-old Antonio Huerta, is now on the run. A warrant is out for his arrest. The alleged abuse happened between 2000 and 2002 at this home on the 1900 block of Seagull. The victims are now adults and came forward in September of last year. According to court documents, the male victim was 11 and the female was only 7 when the alleged abuse happened. It states both were made to watch pornographic movies and then have sex with the couple. Police say the Huertas have had a total of 36 children as foster kids. They believe there may be more victims and are asking anyone with information to please come forward. A shocking day of violence and looting in Baltimore spilling into the early morning hours. Some neighborhoods are in shambles this morning after young demonstrators outraged over police brutality. Let's go to ABC's Elizabeth Hur with the latest. 
The Maryland National Guard is on the streets of Baltimore this morning as family of Freddie Gray makes a plea asking protesters to remain peaceful. I want y'all to get justice for my son, but don't do it like this here. This following near chaos yesterday. This is not protesting. This is not your First Amendment rights. This is just criminal acts doing damage to a community that is challenged in some ways that do not need this. For our after our Monday, the streets of Baltimore belong to violent mobs, looting businesses, pummeling police with rocks and bricks, injuring 15 police officers, six of them seriously. The roof of this police car was stomped in, another one set on fire. This CVS pharmacy looted, then it too was sent up in flames. Police arresting dozens but unable to take control, Baltimore's mayor imposed a citywide curfew beginning tonight from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Too many people have spent generations building up this city for it to be destroyed by thugs. It all started after an emotional funeral service for Gray, the black man who died of a spinal injury while in police custody. We're putting out a request for up to 5,000 law enforcement from the regional area um, in the mid-Atlantic to assist us as well. Authorities are now hoping a show of overwhelming force will prevent another night like this. Again, that citywide curfew will go into effect tonight. And officials say that means if you are out, it's a medical emergency or you are going to work. Elizabeth Hurry, ABC News, Baltimore. New this morning, our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom got a hold of the arrest warrant for UFC fighter John Bones Jones. He remains on the run this morning after being involved in a car wreck that happened over the weekend. We have Good Morning El Paso's Denise Olivas live with more details. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, Hillary. John Bones Jones is the main event in an upcoming UFC fight in Las Vegas. But this morning, he is nowhere to be found after Albuquerque police say that he is linked to a hit and run wreck that left a pregnant woman with a fractured arm and wrist. The wreck happened Sunday and it involved three vehicles, including the silver Buick SUV that police say Jones was driving. The victims involved told police that it was Jones who ran a red light. Another witness told officers that he kept asking Jones if he was okay, but Jones ignored him. Jones allegedly ran up a dirt hill, then ran back to the scene and he went back to his car to grab some cash and stuffed it in his pocket. Moments later, he left the scene on foot. When officers arrived, Jones was gone and police found marijuana in the car as well as mixed martial arts gear and rental car documents in Jones' name. Good Morning America will have much more on this story and on what Albuquerque police are saying today. Stephanie, back to you. All right, Denise, thank you. And it's 6.08 and time to look at our text out traffic cameras looking over on the west side at I-10 Executive, now at Asarco. You can see that uh, traffic is moving along pretty smoothly. There was a closure in the area uh, just south around downtown, but it looks like everything is flowing smoothly at this point. Well, it's a race against time for rescue crews in Nepal this morning. It was the type of screaming and shrills that, uh, you know, I think equate to like a horror movie, really. Crews are working around the clock to find any survivors from this weekend's earthquake. We have the latest on those rescue efforts coming up. And he's accused of murdering 12 people in a movie theater massacre. But was he insane at the time? How defense lawyers for James Holmes are trying to avoid the death penalty. And is the borderland in store for a warm-up this week? Meteorologist Crystal Cry is standing by right now. It's a little chilly out there right now. It is a little chilly out there, but we actually are looking at a warm-up ahead of us. Could we make it to the 90s? The answer after your break. Thanks, Crystal. This is ABC7, where news comes first.